Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. As we come to the end of the year, would like to mention that just in a few days from now, we shall cross into 2024. Zambia as an independent state is going to clock 60 years. As leaders, we should ask ourselves some basic questions. How does a responsible 60-year-old person look like? Or how do other nations of similar age look like today? If we do not make the vision clear for 2024, our fear is that we risk having politics as usual as we have had in 2023. All of us aspire to move beyond the politics of 2023 to a new set of politics that is going to focus on the needs of the Zambian people and our aspirations. And we can achieve that. That's how other countries have achieved it. They decided that they were going to build their nations and now we all run to those countries to go and enjoy ourselves on holidays because they decided to do politics in a manner that it does not interfere with progress and the development of their country. I am looking forward to a 2024 where all of us in politics begin to realize that it's not about us individually, but it's about us corporately moving together to build a society that is going to help our children and our children's children. And I want to assure you, we can change politics in the manner that we've been doing it to something that will make our children and their children proud of us long after we are gone. So the new movement, our party, envisions a mature Zambia in 2024 with a patriotic, responsible citizenry. We want to envision a nation in 2024 of a nation which takes hold of its natural resources and ensures that those resources are used by the Zambian people and they become the prime owners of our copper, of our cobalt, of our lithium, of our gold, of our diamonds. That time we must start to work on it in 2024 to become absolute owners of our resources as a people. So we envision also a nation in, in 2024 which is fully developed, competing with the best organized and best run nations in the world. This summarizes my lifelong vision of Zambia shall be saved. I am restless to see this new Zambia start to take shape in 2024. But the reason we are gathered here too is to help, especially the younger generation that probably was not there when the MMD began, by giving you a little short history and a walk through of where we are coming from where we are as a party, and the future of the movement for multi-party democracy before I come to deal with other national issues. The movement for multi-party democracy has turned 33 years this month. During this period, we have witnessed a lot of things in this country. We have seen the economy rise, and we have also seen the economy go down. We also are aware of certain things that need to be done to intervene in a falling economy by our own experience as the movement for multi-party democracy. And so this is the state of our party. When we took over government in 1991, the economy had almost tanked, characterized by food riots. For the younger people, you don't remember this because you're probably not there. But there were food riots across the country and an unsustainable debt stock of $7.5 billion. At that time, it was a huge amount. It is now, but compared to the size of our economy, 
that was a huge debt. Unique socialist policies had ruined the economy to that effect. When MMD took over, we told the nation about the state of the economy and the pain we were all going to experience to get ourselves out of the economic crisis. Several interventions were made, including an arrangement with the IMF, which resulted in the privatization of parastatal companies. This led to the biggest retrenchment programs Zambia has ever undertaken. People suffered in this country during that time when MMD took over. Prices of essential commodities rose, including of millimeter following the removal of coupons because the unique government realized that the people were not going to manage it because the price of millimeter was so high and they had to bring coupons. Those of you that went to buy millimeter, you took coupons there in order for you to buy it at a reasonable price. But all that was removed. Many Zambians were angry as a result of that, just as they are angry today. The opposition unit made their political case that Zambians had made a mistake to remove them from power. They, it became very clear the angry and hungry Zambians believed the report of UNIP. And UNIP simply said that you made a mistake to vote in the movement for multi-party democracy. Now look at how you are suffering. We will need to come back to UNIP. Kenneth Kaunda, riding on this huge dissatisfaction, announced his return to active politics. Sounds very familiar. The rising UNIP was only stopped by a constitutional change which prohibited Dr. Kaunda from standing on the basis that his parents were not Zambian. Many political analysts believe that if this had not happened, MMD could have possibly been a one-term government. The naked truth, however, was that the mess that MMD was trying to clean up was created by UNI and needed more than the five years that MMD had to clean it up. Especially that it took more than 20 years to create the economic mess. Even after President Chuluva warned the Zambians to tighten their belts, hunger prevailed and a new chance that MMD had failed took root. Actually, it took 10 years to correct the economic crisis that had been created by UNI. So allow me now to speak to your hearts, fellow Zambians. Armed with this history, and we are privileged as MMD because we come to the table of politics with a rich history that can interpret the present. Armed with this history, I refuse to act responsibly by immediately rising up against probably the UPND and President Haka in Lema to say that he has failed. Because this, what is happening now, has happened before, where President Chuluva was told that he had failed because the millimeter prices were high. And I think that if we fail to explain to the Zambian people why the millimeter prices are high and how long it's going to be that they are going to remain high, we will continue to have problems like MMD had in the initial days. And that's why we're sharing this today because of some of the decisions MMD has made. What I know is that it will take time to heal the broken economy handed down by the patriotic front. Like at the time of UNI, the patriotic front had almost destroyed the economy and consequently lost international appeal, which culminated in Zambians losing all hope in both the PF and Mr. Edgar Lung. This was evidenced in the one million vote gap between him and the winner, Haka in the Hitler. Like you need, the PF left a staggering debt stock, which the World Bank in 2017 placed at $29 billion, three times bigger than what you need left. This is unforgivable. The PF broke the record of being the only country to default on its debt repayment during the COVID era. This further deeply injured our credibility and appeal as a nation. It's only in Africa that such politicians, like those of our colleagues who stand and hold the microphone and says they are returning to active politics, 
and people clap for them. Only in Africa would that happen. But maybe let me not say only in Africa. I think let me be clear that this is a historical fact even in the scriptures where the children of Israel, although they were slaves in Egypt, when they found a challenge along the way to the promised land, they said we want to go back to Egypt. Really? They didn't want to go back to Egypt, but it was a frustration that what they hoped for has not come quick enough. And for me, I understand that, and we want to debate that, we want to talk about it. And you must understand that we are not here to speak for anybody. We are giving our history as MMD, the challenges we faced, compare them to the challenges of today, and make our position, which we will be making uh, towards the end of the statement. If there, if there was any morality or remorse in our colleagues in the PF, they should be going from radio station to radio station, asking for the forgiveness of the Zambian people. But instead, they believe that the current economic challenges are an indication that Zambians should suffer targeted amnesia and go back to the patriotic front. We shall have none of that as the movement for MM, as a movement for, uh, for multi-party democracy. We read, we remember, and we do have some morals to do the right thing. We are unhappy about the economic status like many Zambians, but we agree only with the process of our colleagues in the UPN that they have put place in place to restore the economy and the integrity of the economy. It would serve the UPND well to inform the citizens that the reconstruction of the economy is not going to be an overnight exercise. It shall take time. Not all the economic variables are under our control. <coughs> Therefore, we cannot say next month, this is what's going to happen in the economy. We can only work on the economy. And the UPND must take the responsibility to constantly engage the Zambian people as to how far they have gone. The reason we have given that history, fellow Zambians, is to just outline one fact of where MND stands. From October 2021, we have stood right along to support our colleagues in the UPND in the matters of reviving the economy, matters of ensuring that the rule of law is maintained in the country, ensuring that order returns to this country so that we can become a civilized nation that does politics that are civil and not insults or backwardness. I mean, politics or backwardness. Now, I would like to talk about the MMD for a few minutes because there are assumptions going out there that Nebus Mumba and his National Executive Committee found a vibrant movement for multi party democracy and ran it to the ground. There are those people that rise up to say that. Let me, let me encourage leaders across the board, not just MMD leaders. Let me encourage anyone who is a leader in any political party in any nation or in any organization. Every leader has a, a Judas Iscariot who is always going to keep you in check and is always going to criticize everything. He will criticize the food you eat, the clothes you wear, because that's his role. He's a Judas Iscariot. Even God has opposition. The devil always stands up when God is doing something. I have not met a leader in the world that does not have his own private devil, his own private Judas Iscariot. Any leader that God has used in the world has a Judas. So don't worry when people rise up against you to speak about you because the world operates on a democratic realm. God has a two-party system and uh, that is good and evil. So whenever good stands up, evil will rise up. Whenever evil stands up, good will rise up. That's why sometimes when I don't hear criticism of myself, I start to look around to find out maybe, maybe I've lost direction. Because when I speak, there should be an opposition voice. Because that's the way God wired the world. So to you that are leaders and God has called you, do not worry when people rise up against you and speak against you. You have your own devil, you have your own Judas, and you must celebrate that they're in your life to make you feel you know, succeed in what God has called you to do. A few setbacks in the MMD that we have faced. I want to make it clear that the challenges of MMD are not today challenges. The MMD setbacks started a long time ago. 
The MMD came into government in 1991 with over 70% of the national vote. By the next election in 1996, the party faced their first setback. They lost popularity for introducing a liberalized economy and by keeping Kenneth Kaunda off the ballot. Remember that Zambians before MMD were used to handouts. Kenneth Kaunda's government, the unique government, even when we went for independent celebrations, they gave us chocolate milk, they gave us biscuits. It was a country of handouts. And Kenneth Kaunda was trying to do that to bring equity in Africans, you know, us black people who just got our independence. So we were now traditionally hooked to being given everything. So when the movement for multi-party democracy moved from that type of a socialist economy to a liberalized economy, a lot of Zambians threw, uh, fell through the cracks and rose up against the movement for multi-party democracy. And they were angry that we want Kaunda back. And when Kaunda was, President Kaunda was about to stand, you know, the movement for multi-party democracy through the constitutional arrangements, we found out that Kenneth Kaunda was kept off the ballot. Zambians were not happy about this. Zambians were not happy about moving from being given free things to try to find a job and our private enterprise govern our economy. The second setback for MMD came in 2001, when President Chuluba attempted to run for the third term. This party split into three. General <coughs> Kriston Tembo's FDD, Michael Sutter's Patriotic Front, General Godfrey Meander's Heritage Party, the result was that MMD barely won the 2001 election. If you remember those of you that were there, for the first time in the history of our country, uh, a president became president with 29% of the vote, the lowest uh, since the independence of our country. And the competitor, the late Anderson Mazoka May, so rest in peace, had 27%. So President Manawasa only had 2% above Anderson Mazoka. The reason was MMD at that time was only holding on because it was in government. And I want the Zambian people to understand this, especially those that said never to dare come and destroy the MMD. And we have a solution for MMD, and I'll talk about it in the next few minutes. But it's important for the younger generation to understand this, that at that time, MMD was considered a government uh, made simple. That's what a, a kid in Nawapi called it, that a government made simple because of the difficulties that we are describing now. And this was the deepest decline of the MMD since inception. Why are we saying this? It's important for us to lay the foundation and tell the truth about where we are and why we are taking the measures that we are about to take. In September 2011, the MMD faced their third setback with a devastating loss to the Patriotic Front. Members scattered in fear, and 11 of our MPs went to PF for jobs under Mr. Michael Sutter's government as deputy ministers. It was a dark day for the once mighty movement for multi-party democracy. And at this time, I was in, I was in Canada as your high commissioner there uh, when this loss took place. Upon our return, there was a convention that was called and I'll talk about that in a few minutes. But following the loss, MMD held a national convention in 2012 where I won the presidency with almost 70% of the vote and led the party into four conservative, and this is what they will not tell you. When I became president of MMD, I led MMD into electoral victories for four by-elections, almost one after the other. We had Kasenengwa. We went there and beat the new ruling party. We went to Chipata Central. I led the troops there. We beat the new ruling party in Chipata Central. We went to Mukaika in Petauke. We beat the ruling uh, PF party there. We went to Central Province, Muchinga. There we also beat the ruling party. So when they say that Nevers came and destroyed the party, I think that history must be correctly read. We won those by elections. Unfortunately, after the death of Mr. Sata in 2014, our late former president, Rupi Abanda, decided to return to active politics and split the party into three. After losing the court case, he took a substantial number, mostly from Eastern Province to the PF, 
A group of others migrated to the UPND, and the other group remained in the MMD under my leadership, a fragmented entity. This is the status quo we have painstakingly been working on until today. So the accusation that my leadership, or a lack of it, has destroyed MMD does not even come close to the truth, but rather that we have paid the highest price to even keep what is left. I am very proud of the resilience and loyalty shown by the current National Executive Committee to the cause of democracy. And we have a National Executive Committee of 53 people as I speak. We have provincial leaderships in place. The Lusaka provincial leadership is also here. We have the District Executive Committee for Lusaka, it's in this meeting. And we have several uh, leaders of our party. But these have stood the test of time. I'm proud of them because they have fought a good fight of faith for democracy. Now, having said this, what is the future of the movement for multi-party democracy? The party has endured a seven-year-long leadership fight, which was only concluded on November 5, 2019, through a landmark judgment from the High Court that declared me as the legitimate president of the movement for multi-party democracy. The result of this prolonged leadership fight was a dented party image that robbed us of the original trust that the Zambian people had reposed in our party when I took over as president in 2012. Our opponents, who led the onslaught on our party and lost in court, have tried to reverse the narrative that it is my leadership, or lack of it, that injured the image of the MMD. The truth is that through the vigilance of the current National Executive Committee, the MMD has survived. Our team is not down, not to recognize the damage that has been caused to the party, but those who now stand on the other side to place the blame on those who have democratically fought for the party in the courts of law. Our intelligence tells us that we cannot present the injured party to the Zambian people without a total makeover of this organization. The party we shall be presenting to Zambia next year shall be a new phenomenon and we trust that we shall finally recapture our political space. So, exactly 12 months ago, the Movement for Multi-Party Democracy National Executive Committee resolved to embark on a process of changing the face and configuration of the former ruling party in order to cast away its old image. We are glad to finally announce to the nation that the process is now complete and a full program to start in January, on the January 15, 2024, is soon to be launched by the office. This will be under a renewed movement driven predominantly by the youth and women who we have been mobilizing in what I call the silent 12 months. Further, the National Executive Committee has, is also proposing and has proposed the name change for the party to the National Convention which will take place next year. We shall start the year with the Constitutional and Policy Conference to be immediately followed by an administrative convention to adopt the new constitution and policies. Later in the year, we shall hold a national youth conference and announce our national youth policy. And shortly after that, we shall hold a national women's conference at which we shall announce our national policy on women. Let me be clear. MMD is one of the very few parties in the country that it is in firm and good standing with the Registrar of Societies. This National Executive Committee was elected in March 2021, and their names appear so at the Registrar of Societies. We had a convention at, uh, what do you call that place? Bonanza, which was very well attended, and these are products, including myself, and their mandate goes up to 2026. And the Registrar of Societies has that on record, and it's open for the public to know. I've said this only for the sake of those that, the, like I said in the beginning, everybody has his own Judas Iscariot. We also have our own Judas Iscariot. Every time neighbors opens their mouth, they only open their mouths when neighbors open his. When neighbors' mouth is shut, they are shut. They have nothing to say. When I open my mouth, they talk and say that Nevers has lived too long as president of MMD. 
I'll tell you what they are implying. Between 2016 and 2019, and I do not want to go into that, I was trying to avoid it. The movement for multi-party democracy was hijacked uh, by the patriotic front. You remember it was in the media all the time. And they instituted a new leadership there. And you remember that my own brother, uh, Honorable Mutati, was made the president of MMD from 2016 to 2019 when the courts said no. The right leadership is the Nevis Mumbale Executive Committee. But during those four years, we didn't have access to the party. I was not the president. Unless they want to say that MMD between 2016 and 2019 had two presidents, had four vice presidents, had 66 uh, members of National Executive Committee, I mean, had uh, hundred something members of Executive Committee uh, of two fat groups, one for Mr. Mutaki, one for us. But what happened was unfortunate that our colleagues held a convention outside the authority of this leadership with the help of the ruling party at that time. When we reported to the police, the police ran to Kawe to go and stop them. They came from Lilai, hundreds of them to go and stop that illegal convention in Kawe. When they arrived in Kawe, they found an instruction from the PF government telling them, don't touch them, they have the blessing of the government. So those police who went to disperse them became the protectors of that illegal convention. I know the way you're looking at me sounds very familiar, and you're wondering, <coughs> has it happened before? Well, there were policemen around that illegal convention that was set against the movement for multi-party democracy. Immediately they finished the convention. In the morning I was cleaning up, listening to BBC, only to hear on BBC that the names of Neighbors Movement is executive committee from the Register of Societies has been removed without any recourse to us, without even telling the sitting leadership to submit papers to say we are handing over to this. Exactly the same thing we are hearing today. And some people, my argument is when people say, this is impossible, it has never happened, this is, a, this is wrong. I wish people could be consistent and call wrong today and call wrong tomorrow. It should not only become wrong when it works against you. It should be wrong because it is wrong. It must be right because it is right. And that is why some people are saying, you are not very gracious to your colleagues who are going through this problem. It's not about me being gracious. It's about truth always coming to take the day. So these are the issues that we went through. And during that time, my leadership stepped away and we were not in leadership until we took the party back in, in 2019, December, had a convention in 2021, elected this, uh, received another mandate, and now this mandate expires in 2026. So it's important for you, the media, to know that, because I know that you've been receiving some information that never Mumba stayed for too long. I didn't stay for too long. They cut our, our term, gave it to somebody else for four years, and when the party was given back to us, we had to go back and start all over again. On politics, while multi-party democracy entails a tangle between the ruling party and the opposition, it should never slip into unreasonable toxic politics that eventually hurts the ordinary citizen whose interests we claim to represent. Politically, Zambia is in a bad place and headed in a wrong direction. We call on all political players to reconsider our ways and return to responsible politics. We are all agreed that life has become unbearable for most Zambians. But we must not behave as though this is the first time that this has happened in our country. The UPND must not be shy to inform the Zambian people as to the source of our current economic wars and the several interventions that they are making to mitigate these economic problems. Effective communication is cardinal in maintaining peace and order in the nation. We have advised our colleagues, like I've said, we have been working alongside the UPND since October 2021 because of the issues on which we agree. And somebody asked me the other day, said, but Dr. Mumba, why, why, does, why, why, why is UPND constantly talking about PF when they're in charge? They should forget about that. I said, it's a trap. It's a trap they are setting for them. 
If I were them, I will never stop talking about PF and what they did. Because we are going through what we're going through because of what they did. Poor road without a plan of how to repair. So if you PND, if I was UPND, I'll be talking about it every morning, every night. So that Zambians know that what we are trying to do and solve was created by this group. And if you don't say this group will turn around and look like saints and start to laugh at people with whom they have left the problem as the failures. And I think that UPND needs to be careful. So that the sin of one group is transferred to you. Make sure that you solve this problem because you have government, but at the same time let the Zambian people know there is a problem and we have to solve it together. And it was created by this boy. To tell them that they should not talk about PF is like telling Israel never to talk about the Holocaust, where six million of them were killed. That don't talk about the past, just move forward. You now you have your independence, you have your country, forget the past. No, the past should never be forgotten because it shall repeat itself if it is not told over and over again. I thought I needed to say that. So, Zandans from the four corners of our nation are facing huge social challenges. The cost of living has negatively affected the very weak of our society. Families are disintegrating as a result of social pressures. The youth continue to struggle to find a way they can stay alive under the economically troubled times. Statistics reveal that suicide cases among the youth has risen to alarming levels. Jobs are hard to come by, although these challenges are not only restricted to Zambia alone. It nevertheless contributes to instability in the nation. The high cost of essential commodities like mini meal, cooking oil, foodstuffs has aggravated the social status and security of our nation. Any party in government that finds itself in this situation will face relentless criticism. UPND needs to have an ongoing conversation with this nation and create hope that if we all hold together, we shall see a better tomorrow. UPND must generate hope in the midst of despair. Leaders are dealers in the commodity of hope. Beyond hope, however, UPND must pull all their resources together and seek to find a short-term solution to mitigating the high cost of minimum while waiting for a long-term solution. The current status quo cannot be sustained in 2024. Our position as a party. Over the past two years, I have received relentless criticism that my patriotism has been compromised and I have been recruited as a praise singer for the UPND and in particular President Haka in HLM. Our critics have insisted that I should speak more openly on the issues of the economy and the state of democracy. I wish to assure the Zambian people that the same nervous mumba of yesterday is the same nervous mumba of today and by God's grace will be the same nervous mumba of tomorrow. For 44 years today, I have fought the vicious fight for justice, equity, and peace in our nation. I have carried the burden and vision of Zambia shall be saved without fear. I have relentlessly pursued this vision throughout all the seven administrations. Along the way, I have bitterly disagreed with some of the presidents whose values differed from mine and what I consider to be progressive values for Zambians. During the same stretch, I have agreed with several presidents whom I thought were pursuing the progressive path. In both cases, I have generated both allies and opponents. Today, I am being attacked, and for us as MMD commending some of the efforts that President Chilema is making, they consider my stance that, and that of MMD as being unpatriotic. And so, I, however, hold a different view. Some be people believe that the only way to be patriotic is to speak in a certain way against those in power, which I do when the opportunity comes. But I have not been, I'm probably the longest serving member of the opposition amongst the crew that is there. And everything they are saying, I've said. Everything they have done, I've almost done even more. If uh, there has ever been an opposition leader that stood during the days of President Michael Sartre, when, when very few could talk to him, I was there to resist every move that we considered undemocratic. 
So the issue of us remaining faithful to this country cannot be doubted. As of today, the MMD believes that the government path UPND has taken is worth supporting for now. It is important that they be supported. This does not mean that everything UPND is doing is right, but that their compass is pointed in the right direction, the true north. We agree with UPND in principle that the direction of economic recovery is the only way to go. We borrowed from the West. We have to talk to the IMF. We have to talk to the West. People say, why don't we use our own resources in Zambia to pay for our debt? Yes, we will. But right now, we owe money uh, that they want from us. We have not processed our minerals. We have not even put our minds in order for them to start to generate that kind of money. It's a project we must be working on, but right now, this government must pay back the debt that the Patriotic Front uh, 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 accumulated. There's a word been going around, democratic space. The health of any democracy, and I want you to hear me now, the health of any democracy depends on the free exercise of the God-given freedom of speech, freedom of expression, freedom of religion, freedom of assembly and association, right to equal protection of the law. These are freedoms that must never be denied to any Zambia. These are fundamental rights, regardless of political party or tribe. MMD will never abandon its fight for the protection of these rights. We therefore urge government and all state institutions charged by law in safeguarding these rights to do so in fairness and in the fear of the law. Any suspension or abrogation of these rights will always fuel instability and lawlessness in the country. I wish to comment on the mantra, shrinking democratic space. The European government has been accused of having shrunk the democratic space in the nation. We are of the view that this mantra is an inappropriately used and a misrepresentation of the current situation. You can only shrink something that was in existence before. In our case, democratic space had been suspended and frozen in the PF era. MMD is ready to testify in any court of law having been one of the leading victims of suspended democratic space under the PF. In our view, the mantra, the mantra should be, UPND, please restore the suspended democratic space. This is more appropriate than saying that the uh, democratic space has shrunk, because there was none before. So <clears throat> the statement should be, please, UPND, ongoing experiment. We cannot claim that all the freedoms are available uh, to everyone at any given time. It is for this reason we must keep fighting for what belongs to us. The MMD shall insist on the full restoration of freedoms in 2024 as enshrined in our constitution. Let me also make a few comments on the weaponization of the tribe or tribe. It is becoming clear, fellow Zambians that the politics in our nation has crossed the line of national reconstruction to national destruction by using the weapon of tribes. And I call it weapon because it's a dangerous path. A couple of months ago, a colleague confronted me and accused me of siding with the enemy. He claimed that some of my own tribesmen are deeply disappointed with me for seemingly defending the position of what they call the Tonga president. He claimed this is no longer politics, but a tribal war in the making. I wish to address this. I've addressed this before, but I want to address it again. It's easily spoken. A Tonga president, a Bemba president, a Lamba president, a Ngoni president, a Senga president. And there's nothing wrong with being a Bemba or a Tonga president. But what is wrong is for you to feel more entitled than the other tribe, where you think that only your tribe can become president. That now brings problems that other countries are going through right now. This confrontation of this gentleman who challenged me opened my eyes that whenever a people start to front tribe, we stop listening to each other and can never commend any positive achievements 
of the other as long as they come from another, uh, from another region. We now have reached a dangerous stage in our democratic process. This moment calls for, a states, calls for statesmanship and patriotism. I wish to advise my fellow Zambians. We are intertwined together as one people. To the members, my brothers and sisters, let me be clear. Please understand that Tongas are not going anywhere. To the Tongas, members are not going anywhere either. We are stuck together in God's infinite wisdom, and this is true for the rest of the 71 tribes. The quicker we get this, the safer Zambia shall be, of, uh, shall be safer for our own children. The elevation of tribe in pursuit of political power reveals the bankruptcy of such a politician. I want to run for president and win based on the content of my character and capacity to govern and not try. An endowment I never chose nor worked for. I am only Bemba because I was born to Bemba parents. Tribe should not be the qualification for political power, but rather the capacity of the individual. Am I a proud Bemba? Yes, I am. And you should also be a proud, a proud person of your tribe because that's how God created us. I've also been confronted with concerns that most strategic positions in government are held by people from mostly three regions, Southern, Western, and Northwestern. MMD believes that democratic rights include the right to take part in electing the government and the right to access and participate in public service. Presidents appoint ministers and other constitutional offices based on several factors, including qualification and capacity. In our case, our first president, Kenneth Kaunda, taught us that ensuring that every region is part of the governing system is a matter of national security. The Constitution affords power to appoint to the president and, in his own wisdom, decides who should be appointed. The subject of certain tribes being left out has been a subject in all the seven administrations. I am sure that any time a tribal issue is raised, the president does his own audit and makes necessary adjustments to improve on inclusiveness. It is the responsibility of the president to do that without compromising on the quality of leadership that he seeks to serve with. It is a delicate dance and every president has had to deal with it. President Haka Chilema, like all the other presidents, has been given power by the Constitution to ensure that the appointments into government are regionally balanced for the sake of state security, and also to ensure that the unity of the nation is promoted. And I believe that that is within the rights of the constitutional authority given to him. It remains for President Chilema to ensure that this tribal balancing is constant constantly reviewed as every other president has to face. The key to national unity is when every Zambian feels part of the body politic directing the affairs of their country. A word on the corruption fight. As a party, we have been deeply concerned at the slow process of prosecuting these cases. Earlier in the year, we wrote to the president expressing our reservations on the lack of speed and since we have been encouraged to hear the president announce in the last press conference that it's going to take not more than five months to expedite these corruption cases. It is important because when this is delayed, the, victim, the, 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 the villains become victims and they start to act as though they are being persecuted when they should have been prosecuted a long time ago. The recent case of the former Minister of Foreign Affairs, Honorable Stanley Kakuo, sets a precedence in how this vice should be fought moving forward. When damning evidence surfaces around any public servant, the moral thing for such an officer to do is to resign in order to allow investigative wings to carry out their investigations. We therefore commend Honorable Kakuo for leading the way in this new way of handling any perception of corruption by a public officer. Our corruption fight will only be dubbed legitimate when it encompasses those currently serving in government. 
There should never be an impression given that anyone holding office is protected from prosecution on the basis of the public office that they hold. Only a president has immunity from prosecution. If they don't voluntarily resign like Honorable Kapubo, the president should help them by firing them. We must win this fight at all costs. The corrupt have become more vocal, more powerful. They feel untouchable because they can buy their way through the judicial system. It is time to restore morality and integrity in the nation. If we don't crack the whip fast enough, we shall be captured as a nation by the powerful corrupt. Another question that came to us as we were preparing for this press conference was on presidential troubles. The debate of presidential trips has been with us since Kenneth Kaunda days. Like any activity of government, we believe a budget is allocated for presidential troubles. Two things must always be satisfied. The availability of a budget for such an activity and the importance of the trip to be undertaken. Our view is that the president should be free to undertake any trip within the allocated budget. Secondly, the presidential trips must be fully assessed by a professional team to ascertain the viability of such a trip. We have to be satisfied that the trip will add value to the nation. As long as these two factors are satisfied, the MMD acknowledges the importance of presidential trips as a means to sell the nation's potential to the global community. And I just want to be clear that there are many concerns that we have. And every president it has to be sensitive as to how many trips can be made and when the High Commission or Ambassador can represent the country, when the Foreign Affairs Minister can represent the country, and when the President must go. And I must state, having held a second position in this country before, that there are certain transactions that cannot be closed until the President shows up, wherever that is. And to restrict the President from striking good deals for Zambia, or for any country for that matter, is being retrogressive. So we believe as MMD that as long as these two conditions are met, it's budgeted for and within budget. And secondly, that trip has been assessed to be viable. We believe that the president should have the liberty to represent us in different places of the world to draw the investments we so desperately need. And finally, let me deal with one subject that many people don't talk about, but I can talk about it because I'm a pastor. Tomorrow, the 29th of December, Zambia shall celebrate 32 years as a Christian nation. This declaration was made by President Chiluba of the MMD, the party that I am privileged to lead. The questions on the minds of many Zambians are many. How does the declaration contribute to the manner in which the gov we govern ourselves? How different is Zambia from other nations who have not declared themselves Christian? The MMD is unsatisfied with the manner in which Christian values are not being integrated into the lifeblood of Zambian politics. We are very concerned. The hatred and deep divisions in our nation could be reduced if Christianity was given greater prominence. This was the intention of the declaration. In his own words, President Chiluba declared the following. I have entered into a covenant with the Lord Jesus Christ. I submit myself, the government of the people, the government and the people of Zambia, to the Lord, to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. May this message reach all civil servants that the time for corruption is over. He closed the declaration by announcing what he called a new dawn for Zambia, where Christ shall be honored. But until today, this declaration is only used for romantic reasons. The MMD wishes to propose the deepening of this declaration by, number one, holding all public officials accountable to the basic values of our faith, equitable delivery of goods and services to the people, and upholding the values of justice and peace as taught in the scriptures. Secondly, to complete the construction of the National House of Prayer to stand as a landmark of the declaration of Zambia as a Christian nation. And thirdly, to combine the days of prayer and fasting with the anniversary date on which the declaration was made 
and make it a public holiday on which national unity shall be specifically promoted, more like the American Day of Thanksgiving. I noticed that because we don't have our own days, we sit together on, in Africa. Anything America does, we do it. But we need to have something that means something to us on our own. And I think that this is an opportunity to enshrine the Christian faith. I know we pray before political meetings. Immediately we pray after political meetings, then we start lying throughout that uh, discussion in a political situation. I know we pray in Parliament, but we dare not mention the name of Jesus in Parliament because it will be declared unparliamentary, and yet we call ourselves a Christian nation. We have a long way to go. And it is very clear that when a Christian wants to run for public office, they will always tell him, these things are not for you. You go to the pulpit. This thing is for a special people that do not confess Christ publicly. And yet, we dare call ourselves a Christian nation. I think we have two choices. Choice number one, do we want to continue calling ourselves a Christian nation? If that's the consensus up to this day, then at least let's not use the name of the Lord in vain by doing whatever is possible to align our activities and the way we govern ourselves alongside the principles of what God reveals. That's the least we can do. But if we really think that we don't need it, then we have to toss it so that we don't become hypocrites and just be like any other country, a secular state. That way you are safer with God than claiming to be what you are not in the name of God. So I'm calling the nation to relook and to rethink on this declaration and ensure that we make it part of the bloodline of our everyday governance system in our country. May the declaration of Zambia as a Christian nation remain the bedrock of our democracy today and always. May God bless the great Republic of Zambia and may you have a prosperous 2024. I thank you. Exclusive. All right, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you, peace. I gotta go.